Let's start with this problem. John can type 376 words in 8 minutes. What is the unit rate in this problem? So his unit rate would be the number of words that he can type in one minute. Remember, unit or unity means one. So how many words can he type per minute? How do we figure out that answer? All we need to do is take the number of words that he can type and divide it by the time. In this case, eight minutes. So if you divide 376 by eight, you're going to get 47. So he can type in 47 words in one minute. So that is his unit rate. We can also write 47 WPM, which stands for words per minute. Now what about part B? How many words can he type in 13 minutes? There's two ways in which we can get the answer. One way is to start with the unit rate. So we know that John can type in 47 words per one minute. And then if we multiply this by 13 minutes, notice that the unit minutes will cancel. And so we're going to have the unit words left over. So it's 47 times 13, and the answer is 611 words. So in 13 minutes, this is how many words he can type in. Now the second method to get the same answer involves using proportions. Most of you might be more familiar with that technique. So what we're going to do is write two fractions separated by an equal sign. So we know he can type in 376 words in 8 minutes. And we want to find out, let me just put the unit words here, how many words, or x, can he type in 13 minutes? So basically, we need to solve for x. How do we do that in this problem? So if we have two fractions separated by an equal sign, what can we do to solve for the missing variable? Whenever you have this situation, the best thing to do is to cross multiply. So we're going to multiply 8 times x, which will give us just 8x, and then 376 times 13. 376 times 13 is 4,888. Next, we need to divide both sides by 8. On the left side, the 8s will cancel. On the right side, we just got to divide those two numbers. 4,888 divided by 8 is 611. So we get the same answer. He can type in 611 words per minute. I mean, let me take that back. He can type in 611 words for every 13 minutes. Number two, if a quarter pound of sugar costs 85 cents, how much would a five pound bag of sugar cost? So for this problem, we can also set up a proportion. So let's write two fractions separated by an equal sign. So in the first part of the problem, the sugar costs 85 cents given a quarter pound of sugar. So a quarter is basically 0.25. And we'll write the unit pounds. Now how much would a five pound bag of sugar cost? So we could put five pounds here. Because we have pounds on the bottom left, we need to put pounds on the bottom right as well. And we want to find the cost for a five pound bag of sugar. So we're going to put X on top. Since we have basically the cost on the top on the left side, it needs to be the same on the right side. So let's cross multiply. This is going to be 0.25 times x, and that's going to equal 0.85 times 5, which turns out to be 4.25. Now, to get x by itself, we need to divide both sides by 0.25. divided by 0.25 
is 17. So the cost is $17 for a five pound bag of sugar. So that's the answer for part A. Now what about part B? What is the unit rate in this problem? So basically, what is the cost of sugar per one pound of sugar? What would the cost be for one pound of sugar? All we need to do to get the answer is simply divide the cost by the pounds. Now you might be wondering, which numbers should I use? And it really doesn't matter which set of numbers you use, as long as they correspond to each other. So for example, we could use the information here because they correspond to each other. So I can take the cost of 85 cents and divide it by a quarter pound, or 0.25 pounds. And this will give me the unit rate, the cost per one pound of sugar. So 0.85 divided by 0.25, that's going to give me $3.4 per pound of sugar. Now, I could also use the information that I got at the end of the first part. Now, we said that a five pound bag of sugar costs $17. So if you take 17 divided by five, you're going to get the same unit rate. 3.4 per pound of sugar, or $3.40 per pound of sugar. Now, you can't take $17 and divide it by 0.25 pounds, because those two numbers, they don't correspond to each other. If you do that, you're going to get the wrong answer. But as long as you use two numbers that do correspond to each other, they should give you the same unit rate. And so that's it for number two. Now let's move on to our last problem. Number three, company ABC charges $2.16 for 12 ounces of bananas, while company XYZ charges $2.09 for 11 ounces of bananas. Which company offers the best deal? So would you say it's company ABC or company XYZ? What would you say? Well, let's find out. But how do we find out? What we need to do is we need to compare the unit rate for each item offered by each different company. So let's start with uh, company ABC. Let's calculate the unit rate. We want to find out which one offers the best deal or which one offers the lowest price per ounce of bananas. So company ABC charges $2.16 for 12 ounces of bananas. So 2.16 divided by 12, that's going to give us 18 cents per ounce. So that's the unit rate that company ABC is offering. Now let's consider the other company company XYZ. And so we're going to follow the same process. So let's take the cost, which is $2.09, and divide it by 11 ounces. Now initially, you might think that company XYZ offers the better deal, because the price appears to be less. But we're going to find out if that's really the case. Because you need to compare the price with the quantity of what you're getting. So this gives us 19 cents per ounce. So which one is the best deal? Clearly, company ABC offers a lower unit rate. So this is the best deal. So just because the price appears less doesn't mean you're getting a better deal. So just keep that in mind. Some people say, when do I use math in real life situations? Well, here is one example of how you could use math, particularly if you're shopping at a grocery store. So you want to find out, you know, which item has the best unit rate. And that's how you can tell which one is going to be the better deal. And that's basically it for this video. 
So hopefully you have a better understanding of unit rates and how to use proportions to solve word problems. Now if you like this video, whatever you do, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. It really doesn't take that long just to hit that red button at the bottom of the screen. And don't forget to click on that notification bell. Thanks again for watching.